Now I'm going to walk you through the process of building your first app in Mercado. Let's start with a quick recap. A project is your work area for managing a single automated process. Here you have all your automation assets around this process and, uh, housed together, such as your recipes, your connections, your apps, really any assets around one single automation. And by grouping them together in projects, it makes it easy to move this automation from one environment to another, such as from development to production. And this helps maintain clarity and control. Now I'm back in my workspace here, and I'm going to create a new project. So I go ahead to the upper right corner of my screen here and click Create Project. And here I want to give my project a name. And I want a name that's going to be intuitive and consistent across my team so that other people I may be working with will know how to navigate my project. And if I come back to my project after stepping away for a while, I also am able to find my way around easily. So when I come up with a project name, I usually like to put in brackets what the business function is that I'm building this automation for. I'm, today I'm building a automation that's going to handle case management, escalating uh, cases, uh, issues in Salesforce to my engineering team by filing JIRA tickets. So since this is a customer support task here, I'm going to use the initials CS for customer support. And then a more descriptive project name will be case management. So any, any automations I build around case management can be housed in this project. And below that, I want to have a project description here. And I want something that's short, but makes it very clear what this project is here to do. And in this case, automations for managing escalations of support cases from customer support to engineering teams. How do I want to start? I can either start by creating a blank project or start with a workflow app. We won't be getting into workflow apps today. We'll create a blank project. And then I'll go ahead and click Create Project if that all looks good. Now I'm inside my project and I'm going to create a couple folders to help myself stay organized. So I'll create a folder where I can house all of my app connections here. So I will call this folder Connections. And then I'm going to take a step back and create another folder where I can house my recipe. And I will call this recipe Issue Reporting. And this will be located within case management. So whenever I see location, this helps me understand under which projects and folders my assets are being stored. So I'll go ahead and click Create Folder. And before I get started on my recipe, I want to set up the connections I'll need first. So I'll go back one step to case management, select connections. And then in the upper right corner of the screen, I'll click create. And I, there's a variety of assets I could create here, whether that's a recipe, connection, data table, or folder. Um, I'm going to make a connection right now, though. And when I create a new connection, I can see a list of recommended apps that to choose from, and I can also search by the app I'm looking for. Um, in this case, I'm looking for Salesforce, which just so happens to be the first option, which makes it a little easier for me. So I'm going to go ahead, click Salesforce. One, I want to give my connection a name. So once again, I'll use my project code to keep things consistent. Um, that way, it's clear that this Salesforce account that I'm using is the one that belongs to the customer support team. Um, we want to make sure that we're only granting access to our accounts to the people that need it. So I'll say CS idea lifestyle Salesforce account. And the location will be under connections, that folder we just created. And for the auth type, we default to OAuth 2.0, but if, you're, if your connection needs a JWT token or another form of authentication to connect, you can select it from the drop down here. Uh, but OAuth 2.0 is going to be the most common. 
And there are some advanced settings we could get into if we needed to. We could also indicate if this is a sandbox account. I'm going to leave everything on its default settings. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Connect. And so here I'm at my Salesforce login screen where I would log in with my usual username and password. Um, in this case, I do have a custom domain that I use for Salesforce, so I'm going to click Use Custom Domain. So here I've entered my custom domain, and then I'll click Continue. And now I can log in with my username and password. And after checking my email, I see that I have a verification code, which I will now enter and click Verify. And now my Salesforce account is connected. It was that easy. Um, so let's add our other connections that we need as well. We're also going to need to add JIRA. So I'll click Create again, make another connection. And this one will be for JIRA. And so I will put this as CS Idea Lifestyle JIRA account. So now I'm going to select Cloud as my connection type since I am using an Atlassian Cloud account. And then under authentication type, we have different choices, um, whether you want to do basic, which is just username and password. Maybe you have are using OAuth. Uh, you can choose which type of authentication your account has. In this case, I want to choose API token. And then I want to enter my, my host name, my HTTPS subdomain. And I can find this by just going to my JIRA account and looking at the URL. And so I'll just copy the base URL there and enter it here. You can also select HTTP. We're not going to get into that today. Uh, most commonly, you'll be selecting HTTPS. And then for my email, I need to enter my email address. And then I'll need to generate an API token. Um, some applications require you to do this. So I can just go into id.atlassian.com and set one up real quick. So once I'm in my Atlassian account, I want to go ahead and click on Account Settings. And then over here, I'm going to switch to the Security tab. Then scroll down to the API Token section and click Create and Manage API Tokens. After that, I can go ahead and click Create API Token. Since this is going to be the finance workspace, I'll call it finance idea lifestyle and then click create. So now I can copy that API token that was just generated, go back to my form here, and then I'll just paste it in here and click connect. And then lastly, I want to go ahead and create one more connection because we want to send notifications to Slack once the job is done. So I'm going to go ahead and click Connection once more. This time, I'll select Slack. And I'll label it as CS Idea Lifestyle Slack Account, which will be under Connections. And fewer fields to customize with the Slack connection, so I'll just click Connect. So Slack will ask me for authorization. And if I have multiple workspaces, I can go click the drop down in the upper right here. And instead of Workado, I actually want to select the Idea Lifestyle uh, Slack account. So I'll click that one instead and then click Allow. And now my Slack account is connected. It was that easy.